Hey everybody, hope you're good. Uh, apologies for the lack of production quality uh, when it comes to this video. I am uh, sort of starting to get my stuff ready uh, to head down to Emirates Stadium this evening for Arsenal's game against Aston Villa. But I just wanted to drop a short video to share my feelings on some of the reports doing the rounds this afternoon with regards to Arsenal's interest in Danilo of Palmeiras. Now we spoke about him earlier on on the full-length podcast. We talked about the fact that this could be a difficult deal to do, that Arsenal and Palmeiras were miles apart in terms of the financial side of things with the Brazilian club having a huge release clause uh, in place for the player. I also said to you guys though that with these Brazilian clubs, with a lot of Brazilian clubs, I shouldn't generalise, there is a tendency to, to put these crazy release clauses in and make out that you're not going to budge for anything less. But given the financial disparity between the Premier League clubs and the sides who play over in Brazil, you can very often tempt these guys into selling. You can very often make an offer that just comes over and is too good for them to refuse. You can very often put in a bid that makes the club nervous, that makes the club feel as though they could potentially miss a huge opportunity if they don't sanction the deal and sanction the transfer. And it looks as though Arsenal are going to try their luck and try to bring Danilo to the club between now and when the deadline passes. Now, I have to stress at this point, it still looks a very, very difficult deal to do. Gold Brazil were reporting that Arsenal had made an offer of around about £20 million. The release clause is something around £80 million. Uh, I'm not sure if it's euros or pounds. I think it was euros, What I, the, the, the price I read, the price that was quoted in the piece that I read. Um, which means that whatever way you look at it, whatever the finer details are, there is a big gap between where Arsenal are at and where Palmeiras are at with regards to this player. But he is a player, Danilo, who I think fits into both our playing and recruitment structure. We've talked about the need for a midfielder. We've talked about the fact that maybe you could make a case that actually Arsenal don't desperately need one just because of a couple of injuries. We talked about Zinchenko and the fact that that doesn't appear to be too long term. We haven't heard anything to suggest Thomas Partey's uh, injury is, um, is a long term one either. We've got Lokonga at the club. Um, Xhaka could potentially play in that deeper role with Fabio Vieira coming into the side. Ben White's been talked about. There are options available to Mikel Arteta. And I think it's worth noting, as has been pointed out by a few people over the last few weeks, that the role of the six, if you like, at Arsenal is a bit different now to what it was maybe 12 months ago in that they get a lot more defensive support from a much more capable um, centre-back pairing. You've got a centre-back pairing that have a lot of pace that can step up the pitch get close to them. The fullbacks are doing a lot more now to tuck in field and protect them as well. And maybe it doesn't need to be this destroyer that we've kind of looked at in the past and, and have been crying out for in the past. What would Danilo bring? Well, he would bring the ability to break up play. He would bring the ability to be physical. He would bring the ability to progress the ball. And he also brings a threat of his own. I looked at it earlier on in 2022. He's got seven goals in 45 appearances across all competitions. For a defensive midfielder, that's pretty good. And one of the outstanding attributes that Danilo has, according to a number of articles and, and sort of things I've watched and read over the course of the day, is this tendency to make runs from deep and getting to goal scoring positions. And then very often having the ability to take advantage of those opportunities and find the back of the net. You know, I mean, I can only think of a handful of goals that Thomas Partey has scored um, in Arsenal colours. And, you know, traditionally, defensive midfielders don't really contribute in that sense. Now, obviously, you've got to take into account that in the Premier League, it will be a lot more difficult for him to do that. And so I wouldn't get sort of hung up on that fact. But what it does show is that he is an all-rounder. He's been labelled as a defensive midfield player. But I don't think Mikel Arteta wants to restrict himself to somebody who can only make tackles. Somebody who's only in the team to put out fires. The role of that player would involve progressing the ball. The role of that player would involve being able to receive the ball under pressure, to be press resistant. All things that Mikel Arteta um, is big on and all things that we've seen are very important when it comes to this style of play. So, yeah, I think he, he looks a good prospect. As I say, 21 years old, um, someone who can get forward, but somebody who primarily is labelled as a defensive midfielder and feels like a more natural replacement for somebody like Thomas Partey, then maybe Yuri Tielemans would. Um, 
you know, there are reports flying around that Arsenal are still trying for Tielemans, that there are other Premier League clubs as well looking to do it. There was a report from Sky Sports earlier today that said if anybody met the £25 million uh, fee set by Leicester City between now and the deadline, that a deal could be done that would take the Belgian elsewhere. But I go back to what I've said throughout this summer. If Arsenal was so interested in this, why have they left it so late? They must be exploring other things. They must think that there are better options out there. And Danilo feels like a good option. But again, given what I've said, given how far I think the two clubs are in terms of their valuation for the player, is there enough time to get this done? Could we see an agreement struck that means that the player joins Arsenal next summer? You know, I don't know. I don't know. Um, we're going to have to wait and see. If that is the case, it would be a smart move for the future. But does it address the issues now? Arsenal are not going to panic by. I've said this over and over again over the past week. And, you know, a lot of people disagree. A lot of people think that they need to buy, that they desperately need to buy. And that failure to do so could be labelled as negligence. I, I don't really see it as that black and white. I don't really see it as um, as that sort of... You know, it, it's it's not one way or the other for me. You know, I think that, yes, I would prefer us to go out and bring in a DM, somebody who I could look at and go, well, if Thomas Partey is available, uh, unavailable, I beg your pardon, I know you can come in and I know you can do a good job. I think we've got some players like that in and around the squad, but would we get that out of them over a consistent period of time if Thomas Partey, for example, was missing for any uh, lengthy period of time, which we know is possible with Thomas Partey, right? That's... The bit that frustrates me is that we know that Thomas Partey is susceptible to injuries and to kind of rely on the likes of Mohamed Elneny, who's picked up an injury now, that's obviously really unlucky. But to rely on that level of player is a little bit disappointing, given how much good work we've done in other areas of the pitch. So, yeah, look, I'd like to see us sign someone. I'd like to see us get this Danilo deal over the line. I think it'd be a good fit based on what I know and what I've seen and what I've researched today. But I'm not getting carried away because, as I say, there's a long way um, to go in this and, and there isn't an awful lot of time to make up that distance and to, to close that gap between the valuations, but also get all the bits and pieces done. You know, medicals, the guy's based in South America. Um, you'd have to arrange a medical probably over there, which isn't ideal. Then you have to get him to come over to London, it's it, it's quite a difficult deal to do in a really short space of time. So, as I say, not getting carried away, but just interesting to see that those reports have really picked up pace this afternoon um, with the kind of common consensus being now that Arsenal are trying, are working to try and sign Danilo before the window closes. But there is an acceptance that this could be too difficult to do in the allotted time frame, but we'll see. Anyway, all focus on the game tonight and uh, we can return to the transfer talk tomorrow. Be sure to uh, leave a like on the video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. Let me know your thoughts on the Brazilian in the comments section below and we'll be back soon with some more Arsenal content. Cheers. <laughs>